uh, waiting, waiting. We are now live. We're live. All right. What up? What up? All in the green. What up, everybody watching? It's Friday. You know what time it is. Friday. <laughs> Chris best, excited over there. The best time of day well, on a Friday. I'm connected and I'm clear today. What's up? I got a, and I've even got a, uh, I got a cable on standby in case this uh, piece of shit phone decides to die. So we're here and rocking. On. We got uh, lots of, uh, lots of comments happening. Nice. We're waiting for our friends to join on. What are they saying? I'll read a couple off. Hang on. Uh, oh, Noah says he's met BSC twice. They're the best people in a band I've ever hung out with. Thank you. Noah, Ben, that is, uh, that's Noah that graduated, I bet. So congratulations, Noah. I hope it yeah. is. Congratulations. Yeah. One of the coolest of all. Absolutely. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Amy says, fingers crossed that Chris's internet works this week. LOL. <laughs> I'm here. Smart <laughs> ass. John says, uh, John Fred is in San Fran again. Yes. Yeah. He's got a. Uh, He's trying to fix this. It's bright as can be back here. Stephen Hanna says, hello, Mayor Cherry. What's up, man? Over there in beautiful Scotland. It feels yeah, like Scotland to Kentucky this, I today. Feel like, I feel like the Brady Bunch theme should be uh, should be playing right when we come on. They There's a family band with the, said, uh, the name of Cherry. So <laughs> said, uh, John Fred Young, the hardest working man in rock and roll. Uh, text in the mail, dude. You've got them all, all right. fooled. You've got them all fooled, buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hello from the UK. Much love. Hello from Italy. What's up, hey, Ben, I got a question for you. Go ahead. You ever move that rug and play chess down there? <laughs> I need to. It'd be a good chess. Hey, seriously. Seriously. Remember I was texting you last night about coming over and jamming? Yeah. We should, like, we should find somebody that's good at uh, working wood or even, like, big styrofoam. Dude, yeah. you could do that with styrofoam. That'd be awesome. You have to do that. Bring it on. You need to make, a, like, a you chess board in your me. floor. You ain't going to ask me to do anything twice. Well, I'm, all about I'm not asking you. I'm just making a, 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 a bold and incredible suggestion that you have a perfect floor to make a chessboard out of. I don't know. Would you guys, would, would you guys dress up you like Harry Potter and Ron Weasley? Like on the last Hell scene? Yeah. Of, uh, Do that. Yeah. What, what, what do you think? I'm not a nerd? Yeah, dude. Straight up. What up? We got. Uh, Raise your hand if you're a nerd right here, this guy. Sure. I'm talking about. Sure. Greetings from Minneapolis, from Florida, from Ireland. Uh, somebody said, thanks for saving our quarantine. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for saving ours for you all. Yeah. Tuning in with us. Absolutely. Uh, somebody says, there you go, John. That's the next project for you. Make the pieces. The, uh, there we go. The chess pieces. Yeah. There we go. I'll work on it. There you go. That would be awesome. Somebody, hello, right from, hello from Serbia. Wow. wow. Long way. Getting from, late over there. From Brazil. Uh, from Tennessee. Uh, let's see here. Some, we got some Kentucky, some machine shoppers. Yeah, today's gonna be fun. We're talking to, of course, talking to our dearest of buddies in Alter Bridge. Yeah, yeah and uh, which we'll talk about this when we get on there with them. But obviously, we should be with them right now on the road. I need to look. I I'll wait until they get on. Ben, I'll, Ben, I'll find ben. Out. Yeah. Don't bring up old shit. It just makes me sad, man. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Come on, man. Somebody says they're quietly watching this from work. I like your style. <laughs> that is good. There you go. <laughs> as you should. As you should. Uh, what's up? F hello from Hungary. Love Hungary. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Uh, of course, we played the I'm boat. I'm not hungry right now. I ate lunch a while ago. We love the boat, but uh, that, that track we did a yeah. couple summers ago was like right, right, right off the road. Remember that? That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It was like a field party in the middle of Budapest. It was that great. Sweet uh, lady made us uh, that awesome food. It was really uh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll get some more questions while we're waiting on some of the AB fellas to hop on. Uh, yeah, dude. Or, uh, readings from Sweden. What's up in Sweden? John Fred, look here. Look what I've been messing with. Oh, look at that. There it is. 
The so, axe, so, man. so funny story. I, uh, I, while we're waiting on those dudes, I'll tell you this. I picked up this guitar in uh, in Tennessee. We were playing uh, the Shed um, several years ago. It was one of the first annual ones, I guess, we did, which had been postponed this year. Um, but I picked this guitar up, and a while back, I sold it to John Fred. And while we were in the studio this time, I, I was looking for that sound, man, and John Fred brought that guitar back down, and uh, he didn't leave with it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. It's a great no, yeah, but it, it, it came back home. It's a good one. It's a good one. Let's see here. Somebody says, uh, well, I was supposed to see you all in uh, Sayreville, New Jersey last night. Yeah, we were supposed uh, to see you uh, in Sayreville, New Jersey last night. Somebody said, uh, next album, is it more rock or what? <laughs> it's going blow it's, uh, it's really, It's really folky. It's, it's, really it's folky. actually, it's, little... full, it's full on, uh, full on John, country, bro country. John Denver. No, straight up. Look here. I tell you what. I was talking to our good buddy Connor last night. Y'all, y'all, we all know Connor. Yep. Um, I was talking to him last night, and he was asking me about the new record. And I said, "Man, I said it. Uh, I said I, I really feel like the record showcases us not only as songwriters, but as producers and musicians and." everything to do with the quality of the music we, we really put ourselves into it and really tested ourselves this time but but if you're asking if it's going to rock uh oh hell it's yeah. Lamb. <laughs> hell yeah. yeah i mean it 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 there, don't be wrong there's we, we we got the songs on there just because it rocks don't mean it's not you know also heavy lyrically um uh, yeah but sure. it uh it's uh it's a uh, it's a special record for sure. Uh, really it's the best album record. we've ever done. Yeah, I know every band says that, and people are like, "Oh my god!" Every band says it every time they make a record. But yep. when really, the yep. world is starting to lock down amid a pandemic, and you lock yourselves in a room with an engineer and another studio engineer, and there's nobody else there, you yep. have no choice <laughs> but to focus your soul. You know intentions and and your energy every thought you have into what's going on and we did that with this record more so than than any record we've ever done on our own for sure um and i would like to think that we put the same amount of effort and and production quality into this as the producers we worked with in the past that helped us make great records so yeah. you know yep. i know i'm talking a big game man but I, I really think when you guys hear this record you're going to see the work that we all put into it oh yeah uh, somebody says, John Fred, you sent a video message to the grandson. Tell him to keep playing the drums. I'll, I'll, hey, right. And it says, I'll never forgive you. Ah, <laughs> you're very welcome. Uh, Man, somebody, Henry, says, somebody says, y'all got it? Uh, that is, uh, that's Henry. Clark. That's Clark. Henry, I thought it was Henry. Yeah. Somebody says, are you guys still writing that song with Monster Truck? Uh, funny enough, we had a, we had a call about that earlier today. And that's yep. news. News on that is coming. But yes, the answer is uh, the answer is yes. So just uh, you know, hang on. Hold tight. Hold, Hold tight. tight. It's coming. Hang on. It's Hold coming. Tight. It's coming. I have yeah. to. Um, I'll send a text to the to the uh, boys and tell them we're on. No worries. Yeah. They may not really like us. I don't know. They probably don't. They probably don't. Be all right. <laughs> you know what though they're good they're they good are. boys oh, as, yeah. as 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 the uh the founding fifth member of blackstone cherry mr richard young would say i like good boys they're good <laughs> they're good boys <laughs> yeah their new album smokes yeah it does. Yeah, yeah yeah just <laughs> it's yeah. good <laughs> yeah man i remember seeing them on ship rock y'all remember we could play shows and stuff yeah, um, yeah. Those, those times. I remember we went and watched them on Ship Rock that night, and the security guy was like, "No, you can't go down there." And Ben looked up at me, and the next thing I see is Victoria coming this way, and she comes and gets me, and I was like, "No, no, no, these people are fine. That's my husband. They can come sit down here." And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna enjoy the show up close." Speaking, <laughs> of, uh, speaking of Victoria's husband, we're gonna put him on right now. Right on, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Wait for him. Here he comes. There he Please is. Introduce him as that. <laughs> there he is. He's connecting to his audio. You there? 
Can What's you hear up, me? dude? Hang on. I think he's working on his uh, audio. Now, I know if Mark can run that guitar rig he's got, he can do this. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, damn it. That's what I get for saying something smart ass while I'm trying to use my phone. <laughs> Thank you. He's working through some of his, uh, he's having the Chris problems. Yeah. Hey, dude, look here. Straight up. Uh, we have been doing all the school meetings. Uh, there's a couple meetings a week, like one to one or three meetings a week, depending on uh -huh. the week. Um, and dude, they, they're all through Zoom and it's been a pain a lot of times. I think I heard Mark, but then I didn't see him. There, there, oh, there he goes. He goes. Uh, hey, hey. What's up, man? What's, What's up, up, dude? Hey man, What's going on? how are you? Good man. Look at this technology. I know, right? Isn't it crazy? <laughs> Look Thanks here, the world the couldn't keep us apart, Mister Mark. The world That's could right. not keep us all apart. It could how not. How you doing, bud? Look at all them. How you doing? <laughs> I like your backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Love Good old it. San Fran. Oh yeah. How's how you been, doing? Mark? I've been good, man. Staying busy. About how about you guys? Same, except for Mother Nature's drunk in Kentucky right now. It's like yeah. they're they're giving it to be. This is no joke, man. They're giving it to be the coldest uh, days in May, record lows, the coldest since 1963, which is the year my dad was born. So it ain't been this cold in a while, man. Ah. Oh. Well, it's, uh, I'm not going to brag, but it's about 85 degrees here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must be real nice right about now. Y'all ain't getting a frost warning right now, are you? No, we are not. We're getting that put it your sunscreen on warning. I love it. Oh, that must be really nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's nice. Sure. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of that. Man, we were just, so, uh, thank you for uh, doing this. We were talking earlier about like where we, because, you know, we're supposed to be on tour together right now. Yeah. Then we got sad talking about it, and we wanted to look up and see uh, a lot of the comments in the YouTube section were people saying, we should have been seeing y'all last night. We should be seeing you tonight or tomorrow night. And, uh, you know, yeah. it is what it is, but we can we can virtually, we're, we're on virtual tour right now. Hey, we're going to make up for it, right? Yeah, we oh, are. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. We, damn straight. we can't wait for that. Damn straight. So, <laughs> with, with all that in mind, man, like, We've toured together a bunch. We know you, even on tour, when you're not on stage, you sit around playing guitar. So I can't imagine how you're feeling not being able to tour right now to get that out. You know what I mean? Because, dude, I, I love to play guitar. Ben loves to play guitar. But I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever met anybody that plays guitar, honest to God, as much as you do, and is always, you know, working on stuff as much as you are. It, it literally blew my mind when we were out, man. Yeah, like, man. to see somebody as dedicated as you are to a craft when you've already been, you know, named guitarist of a decade, like, and then you see you still working on that stuff every day, dude. Like, oh, I, hey. it's inspirational. I love it, man. I love it. It's like, it's like tackling a new magic trick every day, you know? Right. I love it. Yeah, so it's uh, unreal, it's good. I mean, this quarantine, this quarantine thing's good for guitar playing. If you ask me, yeah. you know, if you can't do anything else, you better be playing, doing something. Right. So, right. Yeah. There's no excuse to come out of this not somewhat better, you know. Right. No. no. <laughs> we always you better. You off. better. Sorry, go ahead. Better learn some tricks while yeah. you're in quarantine. Sure. We used to always yeah. say, "Oh man, one of these days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really learn how to do." that Chad Atkins style guitar. I'm gonna really sit down when I get some time. Well, now it's like, you have no excuse. Yeah, you, you have the time to watch it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> have you guys been writing? Well, luckily we finished, we're in the studio, right as, uh, right as the, the crisis was starting to really take off in the States. Um, for the last, like the last, what was it? Two weeks in the studio, week and a half was when it really started to get kind of nuts and we kind of quarantined yeah, I, together. Yeah, I, I think the uh, we were in studio, like all the quarantine stuff came down the Monday after because we were scheduled to go back in the studio on a Monday and then finish up and then reconvene a week from that just to do one final listen through to make sure everybody was happy. 
and we ended up going in on a Saturday because we had been taking the weekends off. We finished the Saturday, and everybody went home with roughness as we stayed to like two or three in the morning. You know how it is. And oh, yeah. uh, and then we get home, and then it's uh, you know the the engineer that engineered our records, our monitor guy, he had to go back home to St. Louis. So he gets home and then they issue, you know, the no interstate travel and all that stuff. So it's, uh, you know, we got very lucky that we had finished the record and he was the guy mixing the record. So he got to take it all with him and go do his thing. Imagine if you're in the middle of that, man. Oh, dude. Oh, dude well, that's like we were talking to, to Mar from Monster Truck last week. And, well, hey. and uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, they, they're working on a record and they had to stop for a little bit, man. You know, and it's, it sucks, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's brutal. Couldn't imagine being in the flow of things and all of a sudden getting the carpet pulled out from underneath you and feeling like a song could have been better if you remained focused on it. Yeah, right, man. What up, yeah. Scott? It's like Captain what, Lightning in a bottle. What are you doing? Uh, you know, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Just like all of us. I hear you, man. Yep. Look, look at your backdrop. You look like an Egyptian. <laughs> He's sitting on his throne. I like that. I it. I Very it. nice, sir. It's the only only spot that doesn't look like a disaster area in my house, <laughs> dude, right, dude. That's there, why I have reason. San Francisco as my background. Are you see that? Me? We get online and I'm like, shit, I don't have space this week. Like people have to see the house. Yeah. And I just I just come up to the music room, man. I've got one little room of the house where Declan doesn't have like just Legos scattered calf deep or something. You know what I mean? Like, right? oh, dude. man, look here. Hey, y'all stepped on Legos a few times, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the most painful shit ever. It's the worst. It's, like, it, it'll make you say things that you didn't. I have blended together words after stepping on Legos <laughs> that I didn't think could possibly exist. But they came <laughs> together, <laughs> man. They're vicious, You need to man. put some Legos put some Legos in the vocal booth to get some unique sounds. Oh, God, no, please, please don't give them no ideas, Mark. No, please. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, Look here, have... that'd be the only damn way I could hit any of them notes at Miles, Doug. That's damn true. <laughs> you, and me, you and me both. Right. Uh, Man. Last time, uh, also the last time we got to all hang out was the, the, the ultimate party that is shiprocked. Yes. Uh, that was, that was you guys cool. were absolutely bad ass on that. Oh, I remember, yeah, I remember coming to watch y'all yeah. in the theater and like, it just blew. Like, I had not <laughs> see y'all in a while, man. You know, we've been out playing with more of the jam band kind of circuit stuff like that. Yeah, and man, y'all came out and just put my ass back in my seat, and I loved every minute of it, man. It was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, man. You guys, as well. you guys as well. I, I think you, I guys. remember this. <laughs> Do you remember we were watching? I think it was me, you, and John Conley were standing next to each other. Chris, you might have been there too. We were watching Clint do his uh, mm -hmm. solo set, and yep. in that, that theater was such a badass room for like for sound. And his low end was so incredible. Yes, that there was somebody had like two drinks on a table. Remember, and they kept we kept hearing like something break. And I was looking over, and the low end was rumbling these glasses off the table. That's awesome. They were shattering, and I was like, this this is awesome. I, love I just wonder what that's doing to the animals in the ocean, man. Like the vibration coming off the boat, that can't feel natural in the water to the animals, right? Yeah, well, yeah. the fact that there's a thousand foot boat cruising through well, the yard anyway. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Touche. Touche. Yeah. That was awesome. Shiprock was fun. I, I'm, good, you know, um, we uh, uh, we've done Shiprock. The first time we ever did that was um, it was like a half charter. And uh, so it was like half, it was like the second year they'd done it. Uh, so it was like, it was like half rock bands and then half like people that got a, a vacation for a discount. So it was Let's kind of be a honest, call it what it was. It was half ship rock and half senior citizens cruise. Yes. Yeah. It's exactly yeah, what it was. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. it, it's and really it was, cool to see it was it. odd. It explains why rock Black and roll at midnight and people. 90 year old fans. No, there were, a lot, there were a lot of the, the senior citizens, man, that came out and just jammed. I mean, it was yeah, they actually. It was one it. of the one of the really, really maybe the first ship rock, the first or second ship rock they did. We were on it, man, and it was. Uh, I remember Seven Dust was on that boat. A couple other bands. I, I don't yep. think y'all were on it. Hmm. Flip, you may have been on it just hanging out. 
because I see you on boats just hanging out sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I like going on shit rocks from like Mark's plane because then I just right. go, I don't have to work. You don't have any responsibility. I don't, I don't have to wake up at any time. I, you know, I just, we we put them in the crew vacation. cabin. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Put him in a crew cat. No, you get no porthole. You get nothing. <laughs> yeah. Actually um, gonna give you an interior cabin. Yeah. That, so the oh. first time that I went on Ship Rock was when you guys were playing, Mark was playing, uh I think Seven Dust was playing and Living Color was playing. Which, I remember that. Oh yeah. That was uh and actually John Fred got me a pair of wheeled sticks right at the end of that cruise. And I remember that man. Came up to me, I was about as hungover as I could possibly be, trying not to throw up in front of everybody. I was like, here man, I got you some sticks. I'm like, oh that's, that's so great. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we were standing there watching them and I I, I remember the talking. The boat does that to people, man. The boat oh, does yeah. that to people. Well, I remember Flip yeah. called Flip called me out on the last cruise. We were all standing. We had that little spot back there. Well, it was y'all's spot back next to that the pre the pizza area. Yeah, the pizza so, area and the pool bar. Yes, yeah, it was a little back bar that was kind yeah. of it was off the beaten path, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of where we everybody kind of congregated for a little bit. And it was one night, uh it might have been it's not off the beaten path anymore, Ben. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. we have, we have different boats every time. Different boats every time. Um I remember standing there. It was a long night. <laughs> and I, I was staring. Ben says it was a long I think it was a night we went and saw, uh, it might have been y'all's set or, or Clint's set. I can't remember. I think it was Clint's set. It, it was. was. Night, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, first night. Yeah, yeah, that probably makes sense. And uh, I was staring off into space. And the next thing I know, I hear Flip go, hey, Ben, you good? And I just kind of look over. And then him and you and somebody else, uh, were looking at me kind of laughing and i was like i'm gonna sit down boy. i think i was just kind of <laughs> you kind of had that that thousand yard stare with like the slow <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i thought I, I thought i was being cool you know i thought i was totally you know I, i'm i'm keeping you're, it together. you're upright and you weren't swaying <laughs> you know more than normal when you're on a cruise ship oh that's awesome that you was so much were, uh, you, you were in oh, reboot yeah. mode yeah yeah. He's trying well, to I find the security him. take me away from the ice cream machine because <laughs> I would go back there and, and just stand around it like a buzzard on some dead roadkill and just wait till they just filled it up and then just devour it. They were like, Sir, can you can you move along, please? Can you you know? Yeah. But yeah. How much of that pizza? I think I ate about fifty two pieces of pizza on every ship rock. It's just sitting there ready to go at all yes. times. Nothing else well, is available. It's so Hell, the, too. The, the the problem is is every time and I don't know if anybody else had this, but this was this is no joke. And it may have just been my sleeping schedule on the boat. Every time I would try to go to lunch or go grab a bite to eat but between like catching bands or whatever, it wouldn't be nothing open. Mm -hmm. Nothing but the pizza bar in the back. So we ate pizza, pizza and ice cream. Yeah, pizza and ice cream is what we lived off of on the boat. The barbecue place was open a few times, but yeah. I mean, look, it ain't gonna hurt me to miss one, you know. No, you but, look good. Well, I'm working on it, but you look good. You one, well, these days, one of these days, I'm gonna do me one of them shirt off poses like Mark did back in the day. Okay. <laughs> I seen that picture. I seen that B Marsh picture he posted the other day, y'all, with your shirts off. <laughs> Damn, oh, boys, look here now. Hey, hey man, we were young and impressionable. That yeah, but hey, here's the thing if I ever, if ever in my life I've been in that good of shape. I'd have burned every damn shirt I had, boys. Be proud. Right? <laughs> Be proud. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Those, those pictures will haunt us for the rest of our lives. Yep. No, man. Look here. Yeah, Be proud so, of it. Hey, so with those uh, platinum records, I wouldn't worry a damn thing about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get, if I get into an argument, a pissing match with one of my friends, and they're trying to be, if I'm trying to be funny, they'll just send me that picture and shut me up. <laughs> well, hey, oh man we that all got a, we took yeah I mean, dude we, we all got we took some pretty embarrassing band photos when we first started too we were like flipping off the camera and wearing mm. the the long chain hey, Mark. Of your ankles I was like, what are we doing oh, yeah Did we think hey, we Mark, look at it this I, way you were asked to take your shirt off this is no shit i was asked one time to stand behind a truck door because i was the big guy in the band <laughs> So, so B, it's okay. Every time That's you get good. that picture, go. I could be standing behind the truck door. 
<laughs> Could have been that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean, man. Just take well, your head. You, Chris, you, you've done really. You, you've uh, you've really right, switched man. gears, man. Look you look here. great. We live in the dream and, and making the best of a complete shit situation, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, seriously, fellas, thank y'all for being on here with us today. It's been great already. Oh, oh man, man. Yeah. you I man, I think Thanks the first time, us. like the, of course, we met you guys a couple of times early on, uh, on and off. Um, the first time we really got to like G Hall together was the time we toured Europe for like five months. <laughs> <laughs> for like five months. Yeah. No, that was honest, that like. <laughs> honest to God, that was one of the, like, I st we still don't, I'm speaking to me personally, anytime we go to Europe, I always I can't think about Europe without that tour just because how like we literally hit so many countries yeah uh, and awesome places and I think that was that was y'all's first time doing arenas right it was I mean I think it was a big step for both our bands like it we really both was. really moved up in venue size and it was so awesome good packaging together and that was a um, yeah that was that was we had hit Europe so many times and felt like we were kind of stuck in the same rooms and going out with you guys was the, the time that we really noticed that it started, it was starting to build. Well, well we same people here. people all the time always <laughs> yeah. say, yeah. yeah, their first time seeing us was on that tour with you all. So, yeah, right, man. Man. And then you know, it's funny because I was talking about that tour to my dad this morning oh, regarding yeah. there was, there was an, I, I swear, man, that you couldn't, you can't make this up. <laughs> there was a venue we, we did together in Italy and our dressing room had no bathrooms. Your alls did. And the only bathrooms on our side of the building were just a hole against the wall that yeah. you had to back yeah. up against. Y'all remember this show? Yeah. Uh, and finally, we found out there was a bathroom down like in your alls hallway. I feel bad for y'all for the rest of that show, but we couldn't help it now. We, you know. Yeah. We tried. Yeah, to bombard that room. That was in, uh, I remember that, Chris. That was in Bologna. Yeah. Yeah. Bologna, Italy. I remember that. It was like an ice, like an ice hockey rink or something. Uh, it you made me tell my old man about that bathroom situation. Uh -uh. I tell you the craziest thing I remember <laughs> was speaking of Italy, which you guys are like gods in Italy, is I remember we played Rome and we went to the Coliseum that day. That was pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, I remember walking outside the venue that day and looking like it looked like a circus of those people with uh, all bootleggers, bridge, bootleg Alter Bridge merch. That's I've never seen say. anything like that yeah. in my life. Unreal. Yep. To this day, I've never seen anything like that. It was insane, and I was like, "Dang, how... let's go ahead." And you can't do there. shit about it. Bootleg, you know, that's, bootleg that's the crazy stuff. thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And sometimes it's sometimes it's better than your merch. You're like, "Hey, man." You're trying to contact them, just trying to be like, hey man, look, dude, like who do you go through? It's like your design is awesome. Truck. Your print sucks and is gonna wear off in one wash, but your design is awesome. Yeah, right. Whoever's drawing, it's doing a good job. Yeah. I'll tell you though, it is amazing to be able to tour up there. And that and that tour we did with you all was like one we will never forget. I mean like we we had the opportunity to bring our our wives at the time over and like yep. it was it was memorable it will go down in history as like that one tour that like we never like get away from you know cuz it yeah. it was it was incredible my well, my wife was my wife was 5 months pregnant whenever she got off the plane uh to come to the UK and like Ben said it was like 5 months long so whenever we left my wife was this little bitty thing that we knew she was pregnant but that was about all we that's all i'd seen and then all of a sudden she gets off the plane and i see this woman walking with a basketball under her like, shirt the heck is this? john john yeah. john's like no i'm teasing no not at all I just, no, I'm teasing. it was, I'm it was teasing. A, a massive transformation because all of her <laughs> showing happened between the time i left to go do mainland with you guys and then her showing up in the UK, I was like, holy crap, she is pregnant. Yeah. Well, that whole year we toured, like, that was 2011. We did, like, most of the year together because we went out with you all. And I remember this uh, in April. April and May. April and May. Yeah. And then we yep. did that summer carnival madness with you all yep. and you dead yep. man. Yep. And then the fall. So it was, like, the full year where. It, yeah, it was almost the whole year. Ago. I love it. I love yeah. it. That was the uh, two th that was 2011. That was when I uh, 
-hmm. I first uh, learned of the greatness of Paul Reed's Smith guitars. Oh boy, I see one hanging behind you. Yeah, man, I got the uh, the Northern Lights hanging up back there, man. That thing's awesome. Hey, I got a guitar question for you, Mark. And we were talking, you know, we were talking earlier about during this practicing and stuff. What I've been doing, I have been practicing and like stuff, but uh, so please don't scold me, Mr. Mark. Uh, but <laughs> but no, man. What what I've been going through here lately, man, is ever since 2006 or a little before, I've used 10 to 52s. And I've used a one millimeter pick. Mm -hmm. Recently, last year, I went to using 11s, just a regular 11 to 48 set, and I kept the uh -huh. one millimeter pick. Well, in the studio this time, just to get that extra tension, I went back to the 10 to 52s, but I changed the 10s for a set of 11s. So it's like an 11 to 52 set. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going with this, though, is at home and in the studio, I would grab different picks. And as a guitar player, I've played guitar since I was 13 years old. And I never gave much thought to how much a pick affects the sound coming out of the guitar, right? I was always Man. just whatever whatever feels comfortable in my hand is what I need to use. Well, I've started using these 88 millimeter picks. And I'll try to show you. Me and my dad both have trouble with our fingers with holding on to picks sometimes. I've got cubital tunnel and it it really messes with my fingers and they get kind of numb every now and then. But he started taking these picks, man, these 88 millimeter picks and putting these like holes in them with a drill. And the, the sound I'm getting out of these picks at the 88 millimeter is totally different than the sound I've normally gotten before. And I don't like, it's, it's crazy just experimenting. So I ordered like six different kinds of uh, 88 millimeter picks just to try the different materials and the feels to see which one sounds the absolute best listening back to me. It's crazy. Oh yeah. It's funny how a lot of times people will go a decade without even thinking about a pick, you know, Dude, I, I went I, 20 years. Look, look what's sitting right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, I try to have as many varieties as possible so I can, each day try a different thing you know but I, I stick to my favorites but uh i got i had to call dunlop a million times in the last year will you send me a bag of these send me a bag of these send me a bag of yeah. these I'm, I'm experimenting right now i'm doing uh i'm using um a flow what is this a, a, a flow 1.35 millimeter so i'm going oh, the opposite direction I'm going, yeah. I went from one millimeter to 1.35. I like, uh, I like the big ones, man. I like the 1.5 or the two, two millimeters. Yeah. Um, it's just, dude, like, me, I know a lot of dudes. Thing, thing. I, I know a lot of dudes that are using like, like the, the band that's in the studio with John right now, the kid that plays with him is a great guitar player. Uh, his name's Tyler and he's using like nine and a half gauge strings and a two millimeter pick. I'm like, I'm so <laughs> heavy handed with my right hand that I would just snap the shit out of those, man. Every like, time I yeah. get his guitar from him to try to show him a part, I'm like, how do you even do this? Yeah. I'm used to a one mil. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but, it, but yeah, I, think those, like those, I think those big picks really kind of um, round the tone off a little too much for me. I think any anything above a 1.5, they always seem to get a little dull. They, they're big and round sound, yeah. but they're easier to they're easier to pick on. So you got to choose your choose your battles. Yeah, yeah. And then and you, I, it, I, it's different with an acoustic too. We learned that. Like, yeah. Doing our second album, working with a guy named Bob Marlette. He, again, like Chris was saying, we didn't think picks matter. It's just you grab a pick, it works, you're good. But even with like an acoustic guitar, it's like he had, we had like five different picks laid out and he had me play with each different pick and record it. And we played every single one of them back. And I was like, man, the difference of this, I mean, there's really a, yeah. a science, mm -hmm. not, you know, or some form behind it. It's, it's crazy. It's weird. I think the reason yeah. I've started to go down a little bit in pick size is. I have, I have always preferred to set my amps pretty dark. You know what I mean? Like when I was using when I was using tube amps all the time, I was using the Sewell, which that amp, you know, is a is a really bassy amp to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, I never had to worry about the brightness. But now that I'm trying to bring a little bit of that presence back in, I'm finding that just switching the pick works just as well for me as reaching over and grabbing knobs on the amp. You know what I mean? Or yeah. grabbing knobs yeah. on my helix or, or whatever I'm using for my sound at that time, I can literally grab a pick and it be the tone go from extremely dark to extremely bright. Kind of the same thing as 
dude, I'm flipping John Fred. Y'all know sticks are the same way. Okay. You know, you 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 smack a snare drum with a five A as opposed to a five B, and it's a totally <clears throat> different sound. You know, hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah, John I'm just Fred, lucky to hold you, on to him, bro. <laughs> yeah, but like even even in the studio, John Fred, like you were trying different sticks, you know, just seeing which ones, you know, it's as as musicians, we're always doing that stuff, man. You know what I mean? Oh, like, you have to. I mean, yeah, I, I got in a, a situation where like for years, and and Flip, you probably may have done this too, is where you're so accustomed to one stick. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, you know, you you kind of you feel like I I don't want to vary from this because you know. It's perfect for my arm length and it's perfect for you know, the tip. That's but then, you know, I, I went through a period <clears throat> where like using the, the, the Evan stuff, like I was using the thickest millimeter head they had, which is a, a, a black onyx, which is like a 7.5 and a 7.5, which, mm -hmm. you know, 15 mil together. Yeah. And I was still denting the heads to where they, you know, it was just like by the second or third song, they were not playable. Right. And I was like, you know, and yeah, I mean, I, you know, you hit them hard, but I was like, what, oh, by the end of the night, they hold water. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Put chunky Campbell soup in them. But I was thinking, I was like, what, what is it from a physics standpoint? What am I, what am I not doing right here that mm -hmm. these should hold up? You know, they're a great product. Yeah. And it was tip, man. It was the tip of the stick where, you know, like I, I was using like on drumsticks for people that don't know, it's, it's just like picks. There's so, there's so many different picks and so many different drumsticks you got a <laughs> tip like an acorn tip and mm -hmm. you've got a barrel and you've got you know an actual oval and you know like for but me even in tips, like, you've got nylon and wood and other materials right yeah, yeah, yeah. you do so and i had to switch it up and finally i you know i went to a uh, uh an actual um uh, a it's kind of like a ba it's a between a barrel and a and a um i thought uh, you went to uh, just the tip <laughs> oh no 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 no, no man no. I, I am not no no, no, no full, i gotta have the full drumstick you gotta have the full, you little... can't play with just the tip because <laughs> you can't you don't have enough you don't have enough uh, uh leverage I know, people, people, are are watching, people are watching this going i don't give a damn about sticks and picks and i know right <laughs> i know a bunch of musicians talking about it, stuff we don't care about yeah. Yeah, but, but did you all happens, not though, realize like, like, i mean did, did did nobody go this is going to actually turn into a a a like full-on blown conversation about gear because of the two right, bands right. over here they are I, i'm looking on the youtube there are uh, i mean it's insane amount of, of of fans of both bands uh on here in question uh, now you're making me. Now you're making me nervous. So if, <laughs> oh, I it was just us, man. if you want, I'll uh, I'll have some people. I'll, we'll take we'll take some questions from fans to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. So there we're. Hey, I got a question for you fans. guys. One time, real yeah. quick before everybody else gets started. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember the night we did rock collapsed in Germany. And I was in your dressing room eating your candy after the show, laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> Flint remembers. I remember that. I'd yeah, Tony Adams comes that. upstairs and he's like, Chris, what the hell are you doing? I said, Tony, I'm looking for candy. I need <laughs> chocolate bars. And he said, we'll just go right there and get you one, man. Mm -hmm. So I get one. Y'all come back up. Y'all are still sitting in there drying off from the show. And I just walk right in the dressing like, hey, man, I'm going to get a couple of candy bars. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all had, uh, had the good candy. Y'all did. Y'all had that headliner candy bowl. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> we gave you guys all the, uh, all the peeps and candy corn, and we kept all the good shit for ourselves. Yeah. 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 That's hilarious. Hey, look here. I tell you what, though. You take some candy corn and some peanuts, shake that shit up in the bag, and you got a poor man's payday, son. Mm. I remember <laughs> a life I hack. Know, I'll tell you, this is a funny story, too. I don't know if y'all remember this. It was in Sweden. I think it was in Gothenburg. And we, both bands, did like a uh like an in in store i think it was an acoustic thing or maybe just like a signing or something it was before yes. the show and we had a tiny little van yes we all rode in the van together but i remember we get there and of course the the venue that was hosting the the acoustic or the signing they wanted to make it really special you know but yeah. the problem was they did this thing like an hour before doors so we were kind of like on the way over there going was, a lot of the fans are they even going to be here because Everybody's going to be at the venue. It was a sold out show. It's like, who's going to, who's going to be at this venue? And then you have to travel across town back to the, anyway. Mm. So we get there and the, they take us in the back, the back entryway. He's like, okay, guys, 
and you guys come out, you know, you can play a couple acoustic songs and you can sign some stuff. And they had like a, like an intro music rolling, like in the, in the main area before we came out of the back room with you guys. And I remember, I can't remember who it was, y'all's group, but we all kind of looked at each other and we were like, this is so dumb. Like, this is so, <laughs> this is so spinal tappy right now. They've got this epic music playing. And then they were like, ladies and gentlemen, Alter Bridge, you know, and there's like a few people out there and we're like, oh my God, you know. So, meanwhile, we've got, you know it's a, good. there's a, a, a theater full of people waiting to, to see, but oh, I love that. I love little stuff like that. Uh, here we go. Here's, here's the question. Um, uh, now, Pitt Goodman's been. Okay. Is there any difference in the fans' reactions depending on the country? Uh, Lisa Hurst wants to know that. <laughs> Sorry. Is this for them or for everybody, Ben? I uh, I don't know. I well I said I said A B, so we'll let we'll let uh Mark or Flip answer it. Uh, <laughs> y'all are in the hot well, seat, not us. And now y'all are in the hot seat. It seems like it seems like uh the further you get away from home, the bigger the better the response, it seems like. Sometimes you gotta go halfway around the world to get to the biggest crowd. Right. I uh, dude, we we feel that. You know, it's it's crazy like and you know what it is, man. Is it's I think, and this is this is nothing negative at all. Please don't think I'm I'm saying anything negative about anything uh, with American concerts. But I feel like sometimes at shows in America, people are too concerned with what the person next to them may think they're going to do. You know, like if a person you know acts crazy because a song makes them you know feel a certain way. Well, if you're halfway around the world where they don't have the opportunity to see that show you know, three times in a year that they can travel state to state really easily. You know, those people, dude, I, I, I don't know what it is, but like something about playing shows in Italy, it doesn't matter if it's a 300 seat club or a huge festival, the passion that resonates out of those shows, I, we always leave those shows just like on such a, a high, man, because, you know, it's one thing to go to a country where English is the, the native language, you know, but when bands like us go to places where it's not, you know, we're, you know, Italian or German or, or, or whatever, you know, and people are singing those songs back to us that we put everything we've got into. That's when those, I mean, it always does, but when it's, when it breaks the language barrier and the music lifts yeah. up above that, that's when those chills run up your spine, man, that you just can't explain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, here's a cool question. It kind of, this is kind of for, for both. It's both, both band question. It says to BSC, what song of Alter Bridge would we cover? And to Alter Bridge, what song of ours? That's hard. I'm just going to, I'm going to say this. I, <clears throat> dude, I got like your all's first album came out in 2004. Is that right? Yeah. 2004. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I played I played that record until my computer burnt down in my room. <laughs> like, Man, literally just, just fell apart. Um, when we were in the studio making the first record, we would A B, haha. -ha, I didn't even mean to do that. Oh, we would A B. Uh, 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 <laughs> no shit. <laughs> True story. We compared our mixes, our rough mixes, to find the real, just to make sure that they were going to slam when we got them in the car. Yeah. We were like, if it doesn't, yeah. if it doesn't kick in like this, we don't care. And that was our first record, man. So, you know, I mean, I'll say this. I, one of the songs that you guys do that, you know, we toured all of 2011 and, and a lot of 2012 together. And that was probably the darkest point of my life, but also some of the most beautiful moments I ever got to have. And a lot of that is thankful to you guys. You know, you guys had such a beautiful environment for me to be in at that point when I was going through all that shit. And uh, all the people that you guys had out, we, you know, we're, we're very supportive and stuff. And, but I remember we were playing a show. We were supposed to play, we were playing this show um, on a Carnival of Madness together. And it was a couple bands, us, y'all, and uh, Theory of a Dead Man, I think. Theory of a Dead Man. Yeah. I, I'd lead us way and somebody else. Yeah, um, but we were playing and we were playing a venue that we had all played before, but we were in the parking lot outside of the venue. I don't remember where it was, but the stage was set up in the parking lot outside of the place. I want to think of somewhere in Iowa or Minnesota, somewhere South north Dakota. in the Midwest. There you go. South Dakota. And dude, y'all kicked in the ghost of days gone by. And I had one of those moments. Yeah. Like just one of those moments where like things come clear to you in your head. 
and you start thinking about shit. And I, I, I'm very thankful for you guys because while listening to that song, Side Stage, you know, from dudes like, you know, because we consider you guys friends, man. You know, as, yeah. as much as, as we're all friends, though, too, you know, we've looked up to you guys since we were in middle school. You know what I mean? Like, as musicians. So, you know, to be able to have that moment standing there watching you guys, I've only had stuff like that happen a few times. But y'all were doing that song that day, and it just clicked with me. And it just, it's, that song will always ring in my heart for some reason, man. I love That's that That's badass, man. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, yeah, dude. The bridge in that song is is stupid. Dude, good. that was where it was. Where yeah. Miles does the big "I don't want to die." And, like it all clicked with me, man. Like, you know, life is worth living. So. Hey, uh, yeah. this this is a cool question, Mark. Somebody wants to know: Has the '57 Chevy with the updated fuel injection engine been out of the driveway lately? It has been in in my garage because the uh, it needs a little body work. The trunk won't stay shut. Yeah. Hey, Ben, uh, don't come out of his garage either, so don't feel bad, Mark. My my <laughs> my charger, my charger's running just fine. So that's my that's my uh, Sunday afternoon drive. If it's when, it's nice when's, the last, when's the last time you drove the charger? Ah, uh, last last week I took it out. <laughs> okay. And before, yeah. I mean, my four wheeler runs real good right now. I got it serviced last week, sixty bucks, with no big deal. <laughs> 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 My Volkswagen is the whole thing. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Uh, no, dude. Yeah, give us a good question, Ben. Okay. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I kind of ran away with that last one, but I swear right. to I don't right. think I'd ever got to tell you guys that, man. And we hang out, you know, but. <clears throat> oh, yeah. You guys are supposed to answer what song of ours you, you want to cover. How about me and Mary Jane? All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. I think we should do that in quarantine. Let's just make an album of us doing. Going on. Yeah. I'm here. Hey, Go I, for it, man. I have to say, I remember you saying that to me on the boat, actually. Yeah, but <laughs> he did. He did. So he's not lying. He didn't just Google that. He didn't Google real quick Blackstone Cherry songs. <laughs> I Googled the lyrics. Right. <laughs> oh God. Oh, um, no, that's amazing. Somebody wants to know, um, and this is a question that obviously kind of I don't know if any really band knows the actually answer to, but any plan, what well, Alter Bridge's plans the remaining of the year? Well, um, we are tentatively planning to get back out sometime in the fall ish. I mean, it all depends on right what happens, you know, with the virus, with promoters feeling confident about booking shows. Um, right. If you're anything like us, you're sitting back wondering how many more shows are going to be either postponed or just canceled. Yeah. You know. I mean, right. right. I mean, it's I, we're we're pushed back until well into the fall. Yeah. Yeah, man. I dude, like I I went to pick up some. I I went to town earlier to pick up some food, man, and some groceries and stuff, and I got asked, "When do when y'all's next show?" And I looked at the lady and I said, "Honey." Your guess is as good as mine is. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. We've watched six months of, of livelihood just go away, man. You yeah. know, like, I, I, I wish the hell I knew when the next show was going to be because I'd already be on the bus headed there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like every other tour musician, man. I mean, you know, yeah, it's it, this, this is the way I make our living, but this is also all guys like us have known, you know. For yeah. us, since 2006, what year did you guys start touring together? To 90, 97. Yeah, 1997. Yeah. yeah, so for the last, you know, 23 years, you guys have been on a tour bus together mm -hmm. more months of the year than you haven't, yeah. more years than you haven't, you know, just like we have. And it's, you know, for us, it's only 14 years, but we're, we're feeling that same thing of like, Damn, can we just like all go make get some bunk beds and line them up and turn a generator on? <laughs> only you know? 14 years. You know, Dude, you know what? It just feels like it feels like the times when you're in the studio for three months, just kind of not much going on other than tracking. Right. Yeah. Right. Kind of get that, that same kind of isolation. Yeah. Mm. Isolation. Right. You just say that. Yeah. <laughs> isolation. Yeah. You know how well played, many times? Well you know how I many like thousands? You know how many thousands of times I've been I've been asked to play Isolation or how that's the perfect song for the quarantine. 
I love That's it. That's the song. It's a song. Yeah. Hey, I, we got it too with our song "Cheaper to Drink Alone." People were like, "Hey, you know, that's it." I mean, I guess you're drinking alone. You're by yourself or whatever. So. Yeah. Uh, somebody did ask if 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 either band, because uh, we saw this is happening now overseas. If either band had the opportunity to play, you know, with, with the drive-in concerts now, um, would would be up for it? Because right drive -in now, concert. overseas are doing the. Uh, Driving basically concert. like a drive-in movie, but it's a concert. Is that real? Wow. Is that a real yeah. thing? It's real. It's it's legit. I also saw a thing where they're uh, they're going to try this acoustic show with uh, our buddy Travis from Bishop Gun um, in Arkansas. Yeah, they're the going to try Live. it, but the yeah at Temple Live, but the venue is going to be cut to twenty percent capacity. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, here's the thing: I want to be back out there playing as much as anybody. But I'll be honest and say I don't want to be the guinea pig to to be the first person to go play shows and then see how it goes, you know? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I just, you know, here's the thing. I want to be back on the road as much as anybody, but I want to be back on the road when it's safe for everybody. And until I'm, that happens, yeah. bands aren't going to be able to tour again, man. I really That's just think, the reality I think of it. Uh, I read a thing with Live Nation kind of saying that they think the way that's going to open up is – is probably a reduced capacities, you know. That's just the yeah. way it's gonna have to roll out for a little bit. And, hey, whatever. Look, I'm, you know. It, it, you're, you're looking at the like the, the problem there lies in this man, and I've seen people online commenting about this. Um, you know, you take an arena that holds ten thousand people. Well, if you can only put two thousand people in that room to keep a safe distance, mm -hmm. the promoters still got to pay that band to be able to put on the production in that room. Mm -hmm. So your concert tickets are then effectively going to be 500 times the cost. You're right. looking at five times the concert ticket price because there are five times less people in the room. Now, the thing is, is you've got people that go, well, to be the only person in the room with, you know, say you two or, you know, some big mega stadium band or something, you know, ACDC or something to be one of 2,500 people in a the room. There are people that would pay outrageous amounts of money. But sitting back going, like, bands like us and y'all, you know, and I'm not speaking for you guys. I'm just looking at, you know, off of a live thing of, of touring with you guys. The crowd interaction and the way that crowd gets to moving within each other and, and, and feeding off of each other and, and the vibe in the room, Ugh. that's as much a part of the show as, as the, the music itself is, you know, a lot of times yeah. because that energy dictates every bit of it. How in the hell can you get that energy that we're all used to when people have to remain at least six feet apart and, you know, they, they, they can't have any other, any interaction other than looking at them going, yeah, they're kicking ass, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that would be no the most lame all, concert yeah. ever, in my opinion. But, you know, at the same time, I would go sit and watch a band play right now just to be able to do it. So I see both sides of it, but it's, it's really weird, man. It really yeah. is. I, and I try to look at everything with all those aspects in mind and it's it's different man you know? I think opening it up for now in that capacity might be the only way that we move forward I think the biggest thing will be when science catch up catches up with you know the situation and if there is a vaccine or if there you know something that people can actively do that helps to uh, either get rid of the virus or alleviate the symptoms or whatever it's where it's where it becomes manageable and not as spreadable, uh, yeah. Yeah. then maybe you get to start to see people gathering like they used to. Um, right. But it won't be in, until that mile marker actually gets hit. Yeah. You know? Right. Or there's enough you know, people with the antibodies that have got it, you already had it, and, and are technically immune to it. But who knows right. if that's good for life but that's just good for a season right yeah well man i think i ha i think i had it hey i had to poop for 10, 10 days uh, trust me we we talk about this too especially after uh well shiprock. a lot of a, a lot of sh after ship rocks a lot of yeah. a lot of our camp got really sick and not blaming it on ship rocks of course but a lot of people you know um you know that was a, a close in atmosphere like that right at the start of this kind of really happening too oh. um uh, yeah, I do too. I, I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of people we know, you know, had it. And because we heard that they said it was the most terrible flu they've ever had in their life, you know, but we're 
tested for flu, but it came back negative, and, but they still had to be like, well, we're going to write this off as a weird flu, you know? And yeah, then also, I was told that I had a severe upper respiratory infection, man. Declan, saying hi to everybody. Hey, Declan. Hey, Declan. Hey, buddy. Hey. Team Cone going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had the same thing coming off of Shit Rock. Uh, it hit me about two, three days later. But yeah. It was all upper respiratory. It wasn't like a normal cold. It wasn't like a flu that I'd had before. No, you get, dude, it's like a thing where you get out of breath walking across your yard, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and it, I had that and I went to the doctor and she was like, you don't have the flu. Mm -hmm. You don't have pneumonia. But this, I, she said, I got to call it a severe upper respiratory infection. And I'm like, okay. I took medicine and, you know, and, but man, it's, I, I don't know. Did there's, I have that? Something, Very well could have. That. I don't know. Something positive. Somebody said I would I would wear a hazmat suit to see both bands play together right now. <laughs> I'm glad if we could rig up a microphone inside a hazmat suit and I wouldn't suffocate, I would sing it one to sing yeah. it to people. I promise. <laughs> hey boys, we won't keep you much we won't keep you long, but there is two more questions that have been popping up a bunch. It is sure. one for flip flip. Uh, how many do you uh what was it? Say? How many snare drums have you broke during a show? <laughs> um not too many. I, I'll the only, the only snare failures that I tend to have are blowing out the bottom head on the snare. The top head always seems to hold up pretty good, but all of a sudden you'll be hitting it and it just sounds like a bing, bing, yeah. bing. I think that's the best yeah. time in the world. It's but yeah, put your hand underneath there. Like okay, well, that's what John yeah. Fritz snare drum sounded like live for four years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that maybe blowing out the snare itself, like the the actual snares on the bottom and then i've had a couple of shows where my snare stand just decided it didn't want to work anymore and just kind of fell over or started right. to the side or whatever it's one of those things John where do that sometimes like when he like gets him with his foot and he's the, his foot and his snare stand have an argument or he <laughs> right. has an argument putting the snare back in the stand right 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 and then somebody, uh, this is for you, Mark. Somebody says, what is, it's kind of a two-parter. What's your favorite pinball machine? And what is one that you still are actively looking for? Or what's your dream pinball machine? Um, my favorite pinball machine of all time has got to be Medieval Madness. Um, my dream pinball machine is probably the Big Lebowski. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, awesome. I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by yeah. pinball right now. How many do you have? Look at that. I got pinballs back here. Where are they at? There's one. Yeah. Oh, um, that's I got. Uh, I got. I think. I think I have 15 machines. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Six, six. But I got them way, way back. I've, I've had them for over some of them for over 20 years, about 25 years now. Yeah. That's cool, man. I love yeah. It. I love the. I looked at. I wanted the Star Wars one and an Indiana Jones one one time, and I said, "Look at me. I'm gonna be cool and get me a pinball machine in my basement." I looked it up online. I said, I ain't, ain't going to get that pinball machine in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Indiana Jones. Indiana That's Jones. I'm trying machine. to figure out what them amp heads are stacked up back there behind you. This is uh, oh. that's a Masterpiece 50. That's no, a, no, David, I'm talking to Mark. I know what you got back there, Ben. <laughs> oh, you Mark see what, got a stack back there. You know what that is? That's that 25th anniversary. Switch my – I was actually practicing before this. See, my, my, I got my – my MT15 right there. Bogner, the Maze of Barbas, and I have them all. Nice. I got them all over the place. I, I'm so Mark, in between. I was watching okay. a thing the other day that that you did with uh, with Andertons, and you were talking about those boogies, the certain ones that you use. Would you consider uh, those if you could have one amp throughout history? I want to know this. If you have one amp ever made throughout history. <laughs> just to have and put up and just whenever you wanted to play it, not necessarily tour with or anything, just to plug in and dime it every now and then just to get that sound, what would it be? Or do you Tumble. have it? Yeah. drive special. There's Same that, here, dude. But it's like, golly, I got a really sweet profile in my Kemper of a, of a Dumble that Michael Britt did that's great, but that's as close as I'm getting for a while, man. We did, a, we did this venue, man, in Tennessee where they've got one. And they were like, yeah, you can plug in and play through it if you want to, man, but you can't today because we've got an acoustic show going on in here. And I'm like, oh, songbird. Why you, oh. Yeah, I'm like, why are you even going to tell somebody they can play through a 
to a double, but not today. You, like, if, if you yeah. guys, are, if you guys are ever, you might have already been there before. It's a place called Songbirds in Chattanooga. Um, it is like it has it's like the one of the what it's is guitar it? heaven. Yeah, this private collector has all these guitars, and he he has them on display there. And he's got like the prototype Telecaster. Uh, yeah, like like the Tellys made in '48. The first ones that Leo did, they were yeah. actual Tellys. Wow. There's a there's a uh, uh, what was it else Chris that had a, a telly that was made for Hendrix. No, no, no. They, so so in '68, Fender made uh, uh, Harrison that Rosewood Telecaster, right? Well, they also were in the process of making Hendrix a solid rosewood strap. That's what it was. And dude, that thing weighs it weighs more than any Les Paul I've ever picked up. And Jimmy never got to play it, but we got to check it out, man. It was really, really cool. Hey, one last question oh. for you, Mark. Do you have an 85 PRS? Yeah. Do I have what? A 85 PRS, like one of the first no. years. I don't have any of the old ones. Yeah, man, yeah. I had an 86 for a minute, but I let it go. I just, I, I, I want to find at some point an 85 because it's my birthday. I just want to, I think it'd be cool to find one of Paul's guitars from that year because, well, we share the anniversary, you know what I mean? Chris and I have a have a horror story, Mark, about a PRS on the back of the bus. Let him tell you that. Uh, yeah, I, got, I got a picture of that somewhere. Yeah, it's it's still in my garage in two pieces. I had a mirror, man, one of the uh, the S two mirrors um, yeah. that I had been using on the road a bunch, man, for E flat. And I had it in the back of the bus. We were writing some songs and shit. Me and John Fred got to wrestling. Well, as you know, we both bigger fellers, and. Uh, <laughs> He he kind of got me in a headlock, and I just went to bulldog pick him up and push him against the back of the couch. Forgot all about that mirror being in a gig bag. And Skitchy said he can fix it. I just ain't never sent it up there, man. But it oh. uh, it snapped completely in half at the neck joint. Just I, I mean, got perfectly sick, out. Uh, it uh, it That's happened a though. That's, a That's what happens in party naked, man. Yeah. I, I never I broke a guitar say, on purpose in my life, and then that happened. I got a hand I broke in the a guitar. In that I moment, broke a guitar I, in the video. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. When that yeah. happened in the back of the bus, I expected Chris to just like fall apart. Not uh, not to like get mad or anything, but just yeah. be like, you know, heartbroken. But he just kind of laughed yeah. it off. It's like, man, it's all right. It's all right. It happens. We'll figure it out. I was yeah. totally yeah. impressed with his attitude yeah. about who, it. Who landed on it? Was it John Fred or Chris that landed on it? Both of us. So what happened <laughs> yeah. was, so he had me in a headlock, man, and I just kind of bear hugged him and went to pick him up while he had me in the headlock. And when I did, all my momentum was just going one way. Well, John Fred weighs about 200, and at the time, I weighed about 260, you know. Yeah. That, poor, that, that poor neck joint didn't stand a damn chance. I, I mean, you know, no, mm -mm, no, it's done, done. I was up there dry heaving, dude. Uh, yeah, I, dude, it, yeah. no joke. I was laughing. I said, man, it, look, you know, it, it ain't a big deal. It could be much worse. And I'm pretty sure Sketchy could fix this if I can ever get it up there sent to him. Yeah, there it is. Oh man. Yeah, snapped okay. it right out of the socket. Yeah. That's a good that's a good break off right there. And yep. yeah. Wow. And dude, that guitar, like, man, you ever get one of those guitars, Mark, that you just you pick up randomly from somebody used and you do it on a whim and it just ends up being incredible. That was one of those. Uh and that yeah, was an incredible pile of shit. Because uh -huh. I can't play it. <laughs> Come on, send it up to PRS. They'll fix it for you. I will. Yeah, I got. I got to get it up to Sketchy, man. See if he can, can get her turned around for me. You got nothing else to do for the next six right. months. Well yeah, right. Yeah, right. You ain't hey, mind. fellas, thank y'all. I know y'all busy. You got stuff to do. You have beautiful weather. Both y'all have to go enjoy. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look at the rest of us. Hoodies and yeah. and you know beanies and stuff. And you guys are down there just chilling. Just trying to yeah. not die and just freeze. <laughs> I'm mad. Flip, is, Flip doesn't even have it on any pants. He's just got that shirt on. I love it. Yeah. He, just, he slipped that on right before the call. <laughs> Listen, yeah. my wife told me, she said, before you do this, you've got to go put pants on. <laughs> like I wore right. jogging pants. I've just been doing that. Fellas, thank you guys so much. Thank you all we so love much. We, we love y'all. Give y'all's you you families our best. Tell us, the ladies and kids, we said hello. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon on the road, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, guys. Mark. Thank you, Cliff. Peace out, right, guys. Thank you, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. And then we're going. And we're going to bring it up. Look here. Oh man. Thanks, folks.
Oh, yeah, Declan went and brought it up here for me. Oh, yeah. Declan uh, went and completely brought it up here for me. Nice. I, man, I, feel, I still feel horrible about that. All right, Gosh, take dude. it back down there, hon. I wasn't dude, even worry it. about it. I feel bad about it. Well, that was uh, – Sit over on that box, honey. That was fun. I'm glad uh, – oh, That was right. awesome. I'm glad. I miss those dudes, man. Those are good. Those are just excellent band. Excellent album, too. Excellent album, new album. Yeah, dude. Right. Sorry, we, man. we had it's such a great time album. with those dudes on the boat, man. Yeah. There was – Yeah, we did. Well, well fellas. thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This was a good yeah, time. Absolutely. We had tons of comments. We love it. Um, next week, we're back at it uh, at uh, 3 o'clock again next Friday. And we Paul have, McCartney's going to be on with us. Paul McCartney. <laughs> yes. Uh, next week, we up. have uh, some old school friends of ours, too, uh, in a little band uh, called Shinedown. Yeah. Uh, hanging out with us. That'll be fun. Awesome. awesome. So, Look here, I can't even play it right. Out of tune. Be fine. Um, well, I love y'all. And I love, thanks to everybody for. The comments join in all over the world today. All over the world. Fellas. Um, I miss y'all. Miss y'all. Face to face. Love all the Face to face time. Much love to Alter Bridge. Uh, we will mark. We will make that tour up. I, I feel it in my bones. We will. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, uh, man. I'm good we need us. We need us another uh, uh, European tour and, and UK tour together, man. You know, it be yeah. rad. Uh, it be rad. We've said it. It's out. I'm the just looking now. forward to. I'm looking forward to a Blackstone Cherry band hug after all this crap is done because dang dude i'm kissing dang. on a mouth bro yeah, exactly. <laughs> big big group hug no doubt no doubt about i it. seen john the other day for a few minutes couldn't even fist bump him. that's some bullshit no, no. sucks i hate it man i'm a hugger dude if we listen man <laughs> if i can't go anywhere and find a razor i'm gonna literally turn into dusty hill dude like well you know i'm saying look here hey maybe we'll actually come out of quarantine with an image for the first time ever we're gonna try. try yeah, we're gonna look like DT top by the time it's done. <laughs> right. All right, boys. Fellas, I love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Thanks. Thanks, thanks everybody for tuning in. Hey, like everybody guys. stay healthy. Stay safe. See you next week, same time, same place. Hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs>